Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are live to the FinTech Frenzy Show. Uh, what is it, a Tuesday? It's a Tuesday. Um, I was going through all the comments and, I mean, Stack's got some pretty good ideas. You can join if you'd like, but uh, Bavesh had a better idea. I would love Tevis' take on this as he is a product guy. I don't think Galileo would have done uh, the work without a client lined up. Could be potentially right. Um, so I know, I guess maybe we could go over to his channel or something, maybe hear what he has to say. I'm sure he's going to post about it. Or maybe we could hear from the guy right now. Was that good? You're Did so you like cheesy, that? man. You're so, you're almost like at a mid level of cheesiness. Dude, you want to know what's even cheesier? So, okay. I want to be clear with everyone. It's my birthday. Okay. Uh, I'm 26 now. This was not my idea, but I wanted uh, <laughs> I wanted some way to celebrate, and so my girlfriend set this up for me. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. So why do you have that? You like that? <laughs> it's like, does she know you talk about finance? Yeah, what, what I'm gonna keep it going. What I'm gonna keep it going. Content does she think you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's your birthday today. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Happy I, my birthday, man. Thank you. I started out the day with uh, a Bank of America open live stream and then went into a bunch of uh, my full-time job work. And uh, now I'm doing this. And then uh, yeah. I've got some more stuff prepped for tonight to get ready for my big SoFi video, which I've been kind of cutting out like about an hour or two a day just to fill in that. So, You, uh, you finally at drinking age yet or what? Sorry? You finally have drinking age yet? Shut up. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, it, it's actually funny. I went out for, um, for breakfast afterwards and, and I asked the girl, the, the waitress, I said, how old do you think I was? And she was like 63 or something. And she said, 26. And I was like, wow, that's, that's a good guess. <laughs> it's not even a story worth telling, but it was on my mind. So future disco. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, obviously, we have some SoFi news. SoFi's Galileo pushes further into the B2B space by adding corporate credit cards and B2B expense management. If anyone saw this or not, let me know, but I'm going to go over it regardless. Let me share my screen. Is that okay with you, Tevis? It's your show, man. <laughs> Introducing corporate credit for B2B expense management. Essentially, they added a way for uh, small to even uh, large enterprises to have charge cards for their employees, but have a singular credit limit. That way, you know, you don't have a single person that or, or you, you don't run into issues where you're managing potentially hundreds or even thousands of different charge card credit limits and where you could run into problems this way. Uh, they do have extra fraud detection management through uh, velocity limits, which is you know, trying to catch someone if they are spending too much or infrequently or, or where maybe they shouldn't be. Um, so they have all the smartest technology in this, but just a new addition to the Galileo um, thing. But I'm not going to know as much or, or nearly as impactful as this than maybe perhaps Tevis would. Um, from a design aspect, Tevis, do you sort of think that um, Galileo needed this because there was a large client in mind? or just because this has always been on the product roadmap? Um, because obviously I feel like they've been going more towards this, this sort of larger account management, really focusing in on that. And I guess maybe there's a lot of uh, clients for them that need this sort of product. Yeah, I think, I, by the way, I haven't like read up on this news yet. I usually just like collect links and then whenever I have uh, a free day on Friday or Saturday, I, I make, the, the recap video when, when okay, I gotcha. uh, so this is the first time hearing of it first thoughts is if you think of just expense cards in general you're thinking larger enterprise clients like you won't have smaller startups or even like SMBs need that kind of um, expense management system sure. put into place so you're thinking like large enterprise clients it sort of reminded me of the whole fleet management thing where they're tracking like miles and you can expand. Turn this off. I'm sorry, it's distracting me. 
Go ahead. Um, so that's the first thing that I was thinking of off the bat. It seems as though it goes, it aligns with their strategy of moving more from smaller deal sizes to larger deal sizes, which they've been echoing for the past year, right? They're talking about, hey, you know, we're going to go after bigger and bigger clients. And there's a pro and a con to that. They have longer lead times. And the pro is that they're stickier because they have, um, you know, higher switching costs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was curious if, for example, SoFi could potentially uh, one day offer this through their own, you know, commercial banking efforts. If, for example, they bring on large clients for lending or for, you know, business banking, if, for example, they could also handle their, their payments similar to how Chase does. And if this would also be an, an impactful product that they could also roll out. But I, I honestly, I don't know nearly as much. What I think we should do is I think we need to get David Foyer on the pod um, or, or even an interview. No, seriously, because, you know, my main questions for him would be like, what is the uptake of a lot of these product offerings? Because it seems as though every week or every two weeks, Galileo is launching a new thing. Yeah, and they're all sort of nice to have things. Um, but I would imagine that the core enterprise user persona, like that client cohort is going to be primarily focused on like three or four core things that they need. And so while it's important, the relative effort, number one is somewhat ambiguous. Like what is the effort required on a backend perspective for Galileo to be rolling out something like a buy now, pay later versus, you know, fleet management versus APIs for SMBs versus something like this. So what is the technical effort required right. versus what is the uptake from a customer and user adoption perspective? Um, I think that would be really interesting because then we can pinpoint, okay, if Galileo is focused on A, B, C, and D and customers are primarily using features one, two, three, and four, then we can associate those and say, well, this is the typical user persona that Galileo maybe has today. And this is the persona that they're chasing after, which gives us then a glimpse into their future feature roadmap. Does that make yeah. sense? No, I mean, it does, but I, and and uh, to, to add on to that, what, what does the client actually want? I mean, potentially these are not products for the clients that we are servicing right now, because we don't know the exact client list for Galileo, but we do know based on a lot of people's deep dives or or highlights of certain clients, their main target demographic. And a lot of it is, you know, uh, fintech companies and banks. And yes, of course, internally, they're going to have some spend programs as well. But I think for the most part, whenever we're looking at like fleet management, for example, I don't know if Galileo services that type of client. And yeah. of course, those products are developed to go out and find those new clients. But is there any word that we're even landing them? It's interesting because like the first half of my career, I focused on B2C. Uh, like on the product management side. And then now for the past like four years or so, I've been almost exclusively B2B SaaS. And what you'll find is a massive discrepancy in terms of how you prioritize different initiatives, because on the B2B SaaS side, there's the people who are the target, like the end users of your product. So for example, if it's fleet management, it would be the drivers driving cross country. Right. And what are the pain points that they have? And then there's the people that make the decisions, which are the executives that sit in the cubicles. And there's a massive discrepancy between those two personas. And so usually what you'll have where, is you'll where, have, con where consumer is the same, the same person for both decision making and user and you like, B2C, right? Like if okay. I'm buying, I don't know, this mug, I'm the person that's going to be using that mug. So yeah. I make the decision based on my needs. But on a B2B side, it might be an executive branch that's making decisions for me. And they're like, okay, we need fleet management. We need expense cards. We need a B. And that might not actually target a lot of the pain points of the end user. And that's a discrepancy that you're always going to find in B2B. So. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> hopefully Galileo has enough expertise in that space that, um, you know, we, we can comfortably rely on them. Like, I mean, one of the things that I've always been a little bit confused with Galileo and Technicis even while rolling out new products like this, is that does Anthony Noto and team have that background? And yes, they've they dragged out a ton of growth during COVID, but that was also a very particular case. Like would Galileo's team alone without 
uh, SoFi have seen that similar growth on their own without SoFi's name brand. Um, and, and from his investment banking standpoint and everything like this, is he the guy to lead the charge or does he give enough credibility to people like uh, David or uh, Derek White or, you know, I, I do want to see a better insight into how the actual yeah. management team uh, grows. But I also think we're just not big enough of a company for them to get enough interviews or, you uh, you know, like like Elon Musk, for example, like we get so much insight into Tesla because they're all over the news. Everyone yeah. wants to hear about it. So far, it's just not quite there yet. Well, so exactly. So this is somewhat of like my line of questioning for someone like a Miguel Santos or a David Foyer. Um, I mean, if anybody on the SoFi PR team is listening, it would be around like, for example, for David Foyer, what is the exploration process by which they're interviewing end users? Mm -hmm. to get to the conclusion of what they're building is it just a conversation with the executive levels because if it is then it's entirely dependent on how efficient that organization is let's say i don't know throw out a random name td bank you know one of the banks in canada if uh if so far if galileo is talking to them to say okay what does your what do your employees need what so on and so forth it is entirely on td bank as the vendor or, or the customer to have a good internal process of surfacing problems and prioritizing problems. And so usually what you'll do if like on the product side, you will sometimes circumvent the executive, you'll get all of their input, all their feedback, but then you'll run an individual like interview series with actual end users and you'll ask them directly, what are their core problems? And then you sort of compare notes. Right. That's an exercise that I think is helpful um, especially in Galileo's use case, so that what you're building actually targets a pain point of that end consumer. I'd be really interested, honestly, um, like if you could get a interview with uh, David or Miguel, like I think that you would be by far the number one person to do that in my mind, um, from a product standpoint on the tech side, a hundred percent. So if anyone is listening that could make that happen, that would just sheerly be product focused. Uh, that would be great insight to a lot of people that are very interested in Galileo and, and even technicism, just the tech platform in general. Well, it also speaks towards the internal processes of how they think about surfacing problems, prioritizing problems, and their internal workflows towards optimizing, you know, from conception all the way to launch for new features, right? Because their feature velocity is quite quick, uh, especially on the Galileo side, which again, brings me full circle to my is, first is, question. Is it though? Is it yeah. or has it just been recently? Well, if you're depending on like these legacy infrastructures, like payment rails and stuff like that, sure. then you're dealing with a lot of like technical debt. So it is. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because um, I, I, I thought for the longest time, like we've been getting a lot of Gal Ga Galileo news and SoFi news in general. It's just been one after another, after another, every single day. I can't get away from it. Uh, whereas the, some of the other companies that people want me to cover, like PayPal, it's like, what do you want me to cover? The stock is the stock. The company's not posting anything right now until we see Q3 numbers, then I could start playing around again. Well, um, I mean, it, it's sort of like, it also does become a bias on our part because the more we look, the more you'll find type of thing. It's just, you're going to be reporting on smaller and smaller pieces of news. Like for example, that MasterCard certification no mainstream finance media outlet in the world would have covered that it's just too insignificant but you know we we made like a 20 minute segment on that just because we're so in the weeds on every single little snippet of news that you know the more but, you look the more you'll find but even though like i mean i follow all these companies newsrooms and at least you know some of them like i find i can kind of count on a new bank or something they usually have some sort of product that's that's new or delivered i think in the first half of uh, 2023, they delivered 24 new products. So you can kind of get a pretty good stream of news going from that company as they continue to develop pretty quickly. Shopify is being a, another one that I find, like if you really look, you'll find something probably every week. Yeah. Um, but the channel just doesn't care about it. The, the, the companies that they really care about is SoFi and PayPal, but it's just like, um, yeah, lately it's been a, a, a hive mind for, for SoFi. I cannot wait to get Q3 numbers because it's just going to be a huge boom again uh, yeah. of, for stuff for me to do. Just break down the numbers, look at it all different ways. There, but, there's, there's two things I'll say. Number one is like, I find that the deeper I look into SoFi, the less of a percentage 
of the content I cover comes from their like PR page or their newsroom page. It's more like Reddit, you know, Twitter, so on and so forth. Um, individual user experiences, what SoFi IR is like responding to someyone nuances and interview, sure. like it just, you're, 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 you're picking it rivet by rivet. So that's number one. And then number two, it goes back to that original point of like, how significant is this piece of news? Like, what are the real needle movers? And I guess that's the heart of my, you know, thought process right now. Like yeah. they released buy now, pay later. And we're like, oh man, buy now, pay later. And, you know, we haven't really heard much. Well, no, I don't know if that was me and you. I think that was more like a, a Riley, sure, but, but not. <laughs> it's like, but it's like, it's like a sexy thing for them to be releasing. Like, yeah. everybody knows what by now, pay later is. Um, and so when we release something like this, people are like, oh, like, that's cool. But this might be way bigger than, you know, by now, pay later. And so it, it's up to us to actually, like, label those things according to the relative scale of how impactful they're going to be. So, and this is an, uh, a near impossible question for you to answer, but I want you to do it and perfectly and without a uh, stutter. Okay. Um, you're set up to a huge bar here. Whenever actually weighing out the importance of this product, a, a management, management expense tool that will allow you to sort of monitor all of your charge cards. It's it's from what it looks like is it's very similar to their fleet card except now it's for all corporate credit. Um, that's at least how I saw it, right? One, one's a limit, limit spend across the across their, their company. Um, how do you weigh that? <laughs> like, like, is this the sort of, oh my God, this is a massive product that Galileo just released? Because I, I'm just not nearly on the tech side as you are. And so it, it, I, I'm excited for it. But then I also want to weigh the, the sort of impact of, this is not free to develop either, right? There is some sort of research and development cost that that it takes to make these products. And so, um, yeah, you know, is this where Galileo should be focusing or is this more like the Coinbase NFT platform that is like they just spent a ton of money and no one came? Okay, so in an effort to try to be like... You're st hey, no stuttering. Okay, I think... I'm going to break this out into a couple of parts. Number one is opportunity cost is really big for software development. It's not okay. just a matter of like, should I go in this direction or this direction? There's sunk costs depending on the decisions that you make because it's so much more difficult to revert your course and then go back. Number two, I think the relative scale of how impactful this is going to be is really depending on what is their short, medium and long term goal for Galileo. If it's a full expense management software or suite, then obviously they're going to be like, this is the foundation that they're going to be building on top of. And that would make it more impactful because they, you know, they're going to put more eggs into this basket. If it's something that they just need to check off a box because in back to our example, TD is asking for it, then obviously they're just going to check off that box, roll out the, you know, minimum viable product, so to speak, the, the scrappiest solution that works and then forget about it for a little while. And then I think the third part, to help us understand if this is actually their long-term direction or if it's something to check a box is, are they doing it out of the box through like APIs and integrating with other sure. you know, providers or are they trying to build more components in-house and trying to vertically integrate that as much as possible? Because that speaks to the level of effort and I guess by as a byproduct to the velocity that they roll things out in. Yeah, no, I. I I, I'm interested to know, and maybe that's going to come with um, doing an interview with them, right? Uh, and, and hopefully we can try to do that. I mean, we, we try our best to get an interview with them. Um, absolutely, dude, this is not true. <laughs> no one fall for this. It, Riley, I'm sure, is doing fine. However, a little quiet, but the dude's not dead. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so... Uh, I also saw a comment here from Diamond Hands as well saying, Noto said that there would be a ramp up this quarter. I actually, is that true? Because I thought it was Q4 that they said was going to be uh, a ramp. Towards the end of the year. Mm. It's going to be, you know, Q, uh, Q3. Well, it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at just pure accounts or if you're looking at margins and accounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be Q3 and Q4 towards the back half of the year, I think was the actual like wording that he, he used. Um, just getting over that uh, current loss and uh, and continuing to grow. Sure, sure. 
Um, I put out a, a tweet. I think it was last night. Um, what talking. qualifies as a ramp up for Charles? Um, an increase in margins from, I think they fell to something like 20% from 30% ish, depending on if you account technicists or not. So that's number one. And then an increase in the total accounts on Galileo. They saw a dip in Q1 of this year when they lost their second biggest client current. And the pilot programs that they have with a large legacy banks are expected to be concluding around this time, at which point the banks would actually start moving more of their accounts onto Galileo, which will lead to a ramp up in terms of the total amount of accounts. So those two things, margins and accounts. A Bank of America on their call was just recently talking um, about how much money they're actually pouring into technology costs and how they're doing that. And they said that, you know, we can't build everything in house. We're going to have to find partners for a lot of it. Um, but that's why technology companies exist. And so they literally spoke about doing uh, exactly that for what they were talking about um, an AI chatbot. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe that's Connecta, maybe not. But, um, you know, that's why we're there. We're, we're hoping to be uh, a bank of our own and grow internally there, but then also offer a solution for some of the, uh, you know, other players. Um, really quick. I'm curious on your take of what you would agree or disagree with here and what you would add to my list. Um, okay. I, so just for context, Tanner called me five minutes before this and he was just like, dude, do you have time? Come on. And now I'm getting like grilled on all of these things. <laughs> I'm supposed not, to be this just, is a, just a backup. This is just, this is just Q3 numbers. <laughs> but yes, I do agree. Um, I saw this comment. And was just like, you know what? That would be a great idea. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, while we're here, I let's let's talk for a sec. Stack put up this. Thank you so much. I, I do not ask him All to right. do this. He's just doing this. Um, appreciate it. A part of this, actually, though, is I wanted to announce. I can announce this, right, Tevis? Yeah. We're good to go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, after SoFi Weeklies, which we do on Fridays at 10 p.m. till 11 p.m., for which uh, Amit usually has to go to the Palantir Weekly. Tevis, myself, and hopefully Steven will be doing a constant weekly show called SoFi After Hours, or SoFi After Show, or a different name that <laughs> is less weird. Um, that will be for members only on my channel or even Tevis's channel. You can find it on both They'll be posted the next morning um, after, so appreciate that. We already did an episode last week. Um, which got quite heated. Which got quite heated. I talked about potentially selling my Palantir, and uh, and so that's live on, on both Tanner's and my channel for members only. Um, so, yeah, SoFi, After Hours, probably talking about alternative assets as well, because Steve's yeah. on there, so... Should be it's hard to it's hard to uh to get away whenever whenever steven gets going he, he wants his alternative assets and really quickly this is just for my own channel uh i just opened up an account at new bank yesterday can't believe they're offering nine percent apys on savings accounts yeah you better know it so it's wild yep they're the best they're the best um so far after hours yeah also if you guys like what you heard so far in these past 20 minutes from a product perspective, feel free to tag David Foyer or Miguel Santos and SoFi IR on Twitter, maybe clip parts of this, or maybe just tag them and clip the whole video. And let's try Strictly to make this happen. Strictly yeah. product chats. We want to know. Strictly product chats, nothing about the stock price, nothing about, you know, insider selling, buying, none of that, just product chats maybe even just focus on the tech platform. So yeah, let's make it happen, guys. Yeah, that's very good. Um, I'm going to go back to grilling you. Sure. Um, <laughs> anyway, let me see if my, my, my software works. Oh, it doesn't. OK, good. Uh, SoFi Q3 earnings uh, will most likely be filled with plenty of great milestones for investors to enjoy. Things. Uh, like $15 billion in deposits, 10 million signed up products, 80% of loans funded by deposits, 
growth in all three lending segments at once and contribution profits in all three business segments. Tevis, what would you uh, agree with, disagree with and, and or add? Contribution profit in all three business segments. The, if I remember correctly, and you're going to keep me honest, the technology platform only lost 4 million. No, uh, financial services lost 4 million. Yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Um, they only lost 4 million. Yeah, I guess that's like, it's feasible for them to be contribution profit and everything. Um, 15 billion deposit. What was the deposit number for Q2? Was it 12, 13? Here, I will, uh, let, let me just share my, my slide. That way you can kind of see a little bit of insights into just quick reasons for why I was thinking this. Yeah. Um, one is, where's my total product count? Total product counts uh, has been going up about 900,000 ish um, per. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to pull that out. 900,000 ish, like last quarter. We're at 9.4 million. I think getting an additional 600,000 will be uh, not a breeze, but absolutely doable. We've done it for many, many quarters before it. Uh, mm -hmm. 10 million in uh, the 10 million milestone, I think, will be hit. Yeah. Um, Warehouse percentage of funding versus deposit percentage of, fu uh, of funding. 80%. Um, yeah. You know, 79.9% uh, after going up a little less than 2% before that, 2%, um, and then 7%. I think that we'll see another notch up. It's not going to be flying high. Like, obviously, we do need, yeah. uh, you know, warehouse funds um, to quickly scale, but still uh, very, very good. Last time. Uh, we did deposits was... I think deposits might be the only thing that doesn't hit, honestly. 12.7 million. That means we got to do uh, 2.26 uh, 2. million. Yeah, maybe. Or billion, it'll billion. Maybe it'll hit. 2.26 billion. Last quarter, we did 2.7. I don't maybe think not. it's a, a, a crazy statement to make. We'll We'll see. I think I think all of the ones that you laid out there are pretty fair. Contribution profitable tech platform. We did 17 million last quarter, 183 million for for lending, and then minus four million for uh, financial services. Just to be fair, over the last four quarters, we did negative 52, negative 43, negative 24, then negative four. Yeah, so but look last quarter we closed a 20 million dollar gap. This quarter we have to close a four million dollar gap. The trend on lending is interesting as well, just to see if it's going to keep going down. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, there, there were a couple interesting statistics uh, last quarter. In fact, I, I dropped all the highlights <laughs> getting ready for, for the new quarter. So we'll see. But I was trying to find any other interesting things that potentially uh, we could see. This one, I wish. This went back I wish up, we didn't didn't break it? trend, but we did. Yeah. This, this went back up recently. Yeah, and honestly, I think it probably has to do with the amount of new members that we signed. We signed so many new members that I'm sure that might have triggered some some performance uh, things for certain individuals, and that's might maybe why it ticked up, or maybe we signed on new executives that took some pretty high front end load, um, you know, compensation. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. I mean, hey, maybe it does. Maybe, uh, Q2 last quarter or last year was the highest we've ever seen but not nearly as high here. I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, because it's not like our revenue went down. So for it to actually tick up, it must have been a pretty big increase to the SPC. Right, yeah. The, the, the actual bar is the absolute number. So it's not even a percentage of of revenue. So like we, we went the up... Line is, the line is. Yeah, the line is percentage. Yeah. Yeah. But... You know, 13, I think we wore 13.6 a lot better than 14.9. But it's funny, like the last time that we were here, uh, you know, stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue is 23%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, same amount of stock-based compensation, it's only 14.94%. Or yeah, I guess so you could say 15%. This is the thing though, right? Like if you zoom out, guys, and you look at this company year over year, everything is going in the right direction. It's just that we're looking at it so granularly, like even quarter over quarter. And there's a lot of aspects, like they could hire one new executive and that could affect the number right. quarter over quarter, but not year over year. 
um, you know, for example, for for lending or or whatnot, like the macro has to be taken into account. There's seasonality. There's all kinds of different things. Like if I wanted to open a new um, credit card with a bank, I'm more likely to do that January because the yearly rewards come out. And if I'm you know churning or or whatever, so there is there are some aspects that you have to consider that you can't look so granularly when you're looking at these numbers. Look at this as well. Uh, just very recently, I took the five year on Google Trends, um, uh, added up all the different uh, percentages because the way that it, it, it is, it's kind of weird trying to get any sort of real number out of Google Trends, but they give you a, a percentage base on what the highest amount of search traffic was and the lowest amount uh, and rank it between 100% all the way down to zero. Um, I took each individual week that they reported and then took those percentages and added them up as an absolute number. Uh, and then, you know, mark those to, to show the blue columns here. And then also added on how many new members were added that quarter. Truthfully, there's not a whole lot of correlation. <laughs> um, but it well, can't no, hurt. Q, Q3 is like, like if you look at last year or 2021 as well, like Q3, Q4, I think cause that's because like Super Bowl, right? Yeah, 511. Yeah, it could be potentially. Um, Q3 I'll is when the season starts. Taylor Swift is larger than the Super Bowl. It's, uh, yeah. it's official. Oh, actually, I was going to talk about this in a video, but we can talk about it a little bit here. Did you see the the whole like Taylor Swift movie thing for the Eras tour? It was like breaking records. Did and... you see my yesterday's FinTech frenzy? You, you... <laughs> oh, you talked about this? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I did. Um, no, but but what do you think, though? Hey, man, I said it in, in July when she was going to perform. I made several videos on this and you guys were like, Taylor Swift, blah, blah, blah. She's a big deal. She's like a cult fault. Like there was there was this I can't I, I got to find it. This guy was making like a TikTok around how much of an uplift the NFL was having around just this like taylor swift with uh this football guy that she's now dating um like his jerseys are for sale tickets for and, like the percentage of women at nfl games it's just like it's ridiculous yeah so, yeah it's a big deal i mean uh yeah i mean uh, as of late what, what's happened with the airs tour i think i've learned a lot more about taylor swift than i have recently or before she might be the biggest artist ever and not only that but like the business acumen of yeah. whoever is on that team making some of these calls to like own the ownership of the movie distribution and all this stuff it's like insane like like she's beating it on all fronts she's still so young too it's ridiculous yeah. they sold her uh they sold her her album rights and then she re-recorded all of it and then re-released it and then the second new renditions were more popular than the first and uh like i don't know if this is a first time ever thing but it definitely is with an artist for sure they mm -hmm. didn't go through a distributor uh, or they didn't go through a publisher for her movie they took the rights and went directly to amc distribution to uh just go and have a deal directly with the movie theaters that's why like the high high 90 percent of people watching this movie is in amc theaters uh, yeah it's just phenomenal and then whenever you compare it to the the movies that it's up against like the joker uh you know it's hitting some pretty unbelievable numbers like think of it this way and it's think filmed it. in sofi stadium <laughs> well yeah so that's the thing though right like and not to get on a on a tangent but think of the way i think of it is how many people out there can meaningfully move markets consistently you know it's true it's true. It makes me want to celebrate. <laughs> I'm never coming on the show again. There you are. It's a great show. We party. We have, we have fun. fun. We, we party. party. <laughs> you love it. Now, now you're using that. Thing. on a show from the mountaintops. I don't even know what that sounded like. Did that? It says megaphone. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. All right. What what else are we talking about? What's what's the next thing? Um, 
let me see here. Uh, just small stuff. I, I started learning about this company called Scalapay. I've honestly never heard of them. They're Italy's first fintech unicorn. They were created uh, near mid-2019, and they've raised $727 million in funding to date, more than 5,000 stores, 7,000 phys physical uh, points of sale. They are a buy now, pay later solution in Southern Europe and just exploded onto the space. The reason why I'm bringing this up is that they just signed a multi-year contract with Marketa hmm. uh, to help with different distributions of their product. Well, actually, um, I think this this pivots us nicely. When are you going to talk about Marketa? <laughs> because I posted earlier today around, you know, we have 10 episodes in the bag for Stock Tank. We had six guests for those 10 episodes. Tanner and I did two each. He did New Bank and Adia and I did uh, Unity and Pinterest, I think it was. Um, how many How many did I do? Two. I think I started the end phase conversation. Okay, like we we uh, we attributed that one to the So guest. it's your turn. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can do one. I know we have a, we have a guest for next week. Um, and then the week after that, I, I think um, Jonah wanted to come back on. There are a lot of suggestions if we go through that. Oh, thread. we do have a guest. Yeah. 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 But Sorry. Marketa is something that we chatted about that you wanted to talk about. So perfect opportunity. Yeah, I would, I would like to. I would like to. It's just a matter of getting around to it. <laughs> like, dude, I find this so... Uh, uh, during that uh, fintech frenzy the other day and TJ jumped on and that was a nightmare. Uh, love the guy, but just in terms of legality, <laughs> that was rough. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and you were in there and you're like, when does this guy quit his job to work on YouTube full-time? This is not my full-time job. So to bump out uh, Stock Tank, SoFi, After Hour stuff for the members, uh, and what I'm doing now with this SoFi uh, full analysis video, this is taking all my time. Tanner, you have, you cannot, you cannot complain because you know what my schedule looks like. I get it. I get it. But I, did I call you and take you away from work or did I call you and take you away from? Yeah, you called me and took me away from something. All right. Yeah. <laughs> my, the, the, the sliver of free time I have in my entire week. I stole it. So, <laughs> so I can make ad revenue and talk about our beloved. So exactly. far. you're profiting off me right now. I am. Like, thank you. Like a mint. Thank you. Finance junkies. It's not a lot. It's uh, that we. <laughs> I got 157 people in here. I mean, we we make. Wait, this is a, a passion project for sure. Um, but yeah. that being said, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's the fintech frenzy. A lot of more videos to come. The daily live streams. We're coming into earnings season, so hopefully. Um, you know, I'll be live for every single stock that we want to talk about in the fintech space. And hopefully there's not a ton of overlap. There is a little bit block and Coinbase all kind of coming together on the same uh, times. We'll figure it out. Tevis hopefully is able to join us for the uh, SoFi earnings call. It's seeming to time up a little bit poorly with the Vegas trip. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, but regardless, thank you all so much. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. You guys are freaking amazing. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now. See y'all.